Welcome back to Next Level Rides. In today's episode, we're gonna go over something very particular regarding the N54s. So stay tuned and we're gonna get at it. So if you own an N54, I'm sure you've experienced this at one point in your lifetime with the vehicle. Whenever you do a down pipes or whenever you do certain upgrades to the vehicle, it starts to smoke. Now, I usually tell people shy away from doing down pipes. They're not really needed to about 400 horsepower, but if you do down pipes, expect that the vehicle is going to start smoking, especially on diesel. There could be a couple of reasons for it. One reason that's actually creeping up pretty good is valve stem seals. So valve stem seals can smoke on diesel and not just at a cold start. Other than valve stem seals, it's typically the PCV system. So we're gonna go over how to revamp your PCV system the proper way to try and avoid that smoking. Now, this isn't for every vehicle and it's not like a cookie cutter thing. So you'll have to pick and choose certain pieces that work best for you, but it's a lot of trial and error. Now, fortunately, I've spent hours doing this and research and reading forums. So I have a decent idea, but we'll get started. So a lot of the time, the first step that people will end up taking is to put a BMS or a similar style catch can on the high side of your PCV system. Now, when I've run one of those for 30, 40, 50,000 kilometers, it hasn't collected any oil, so I really don't see much benefit in it. But on the high side PCV system, from the back of the valve cover, you're going to have a plastic connection that goes to the factory flapper valve. Now, what that is, is essentially a one-way check valve that bleeds a little bit of air on D cell, but during acceleration and when you're boosting, it will open and it will put any contaminants or any oil into the rear inlet. Now, sometimes you'll end up getting a leak from the rear inlet, which is typically just oil buildup and it's not really a big deal at all. But the way to revamp your high side PCV system from valve cover, you're gonna go with a VTT or a similar style PCV flapper delete. Now, from the flapper delete, which is something similar to this. Actually, I think this is exactly it. Yeah, so this is the VTT style flapper delete. So essentially you'll take your factory flapper valve out, including the tubing. You'll put this in and it ends up converting it to a dash eight AN. Now, once you put that in, that's gonna be a very tight sealing fit. Past that, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of a hose to what they call a China valve. Now, China valve being simply just a one-way check valve. Now, the reason you would wanna use one of these is because it doesn't actually bleed back on vacuum. And pretty self-explanatory, you're gonna have the arrow, so that'll go towards the rear inlet. Now, I'll put a picture up of how some people have made this work, but realistically, you could put hose just over top the end of the AN fittings and you can hose clamp it down and it's really gonna work the same. But it's, your goal is go from the delete fitting to put the China valve in and from the China valve adapt it to the factory heater. So it's really not that hard. Sometimes you can keep the factory flapper valve and upgrade or at least change it to an OEM unit or a new fresh unit and you should be fine. So I'll include a picture here of how I made mine leak proof and it worked good for me. So for the low side, typically you're gonna have a plastic PCV valve that's integrated into the valve cover. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the factory PCV system, it essentially has the PCV valve with a cap and it utilizes runners inside the actual PCV, or sorry, inside the valve cover itself. So for each runner, you're gonna have essentially a tiny little hole that's gonna pull vacuum on that valve cover that's gonna pull the oil vapors directly into the combustion process. Now, what you wanna to try to avoid is, one, having to do walnut blasting, and two, contamination is really not a good thing. Now, once you've upgraded your turbos, and now once you've gone for more power, bolt-ons, downpipes, and so forth, this is gonna be a very good idea. A lot of people will go to just a billet-style RB PCV valve, and for the most part, as long as your valve cover is healthy, you're not gonna have any issues. But in the event that you do have smoking, whether it's tired valve stem seals or whether it's the PCV system that's not pulling an adequate amount of vacuum on the valve cover itself, this is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna use what's called an ADE 
PCV delete fitting. Now what that essentially does is that eliminates the factory PCV valve in the valve cover and it converts it to, I believe a dash eight or a dash 10 AN line. So essentially what it does is once you put that fitting into your valve cover, it's going to bypass the factory channels in the valve cover itself. So you're no longer gonna get the oil vapors going directly into the combustion process. Now, you could go a step further into actually blocking those. So what people do when they pull the valve cover off, if it needs to be changed, or if you end up needing to wanna go that extra step, people have tapped and put plugs into these ports. It's not necessary. I never needed to complete that. So ADE fitting to essentially dash eight, we'll call it. Now, right from there, there's gonna be a very happy or very fine line of too much vacuum or too little vacuum. So what I've found is to put directly after that PCV valve, a Toyota Supra PCV valve, just a factory one, like you would get on a factory Mark IV 2JZ Supra. You'll put that directly behind the PCV delete fitting. And the reason being is it's going to be right on top of the engine. So if you do drive your vehicle in the winter time, it's gonna be warm and it's not gonna freeze causing excessive crankcase pressure blow by or a bunch of other issues. Now past that PCV fitting and that PCV valve, I believe it's a quarter inch that actually comes off there. So from that hose, you'll just go to an inlet of a Mishimoto style catch can. So you'll go with one of these. So an in and an out. So it'll go to the in port. The reason I use one of these catch cans is simply for the filtration. So from the in port, it's gonna go down through this channel. It's gonna go down through this screen. Now, sometimes you can put stainless steel or like a stainless steel scrub brush, pull it apart, stuff one of them into here, and then it'll add to the filtration. Now, past that, when it goes out, it's gonna go through this little brass screen. Now, this is a very, very, very fine screen. So the goal between this little flange here, this little cheese grater kind of screen, the stainless steel wool you'd pull in, put in, and this brass screen is to catch the oil. Now, once the oil ends up cooling, it will pool, turn into droplets, and it will drip into the can. And the nice thing about this is it just has an Allen head there for you to drain. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. From the out port, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be routing it back into the EVAP line near your throttle body. That might be a little complicated and a little confusing. So I'll include a photo here of exactly how I managed to do it. It's simply just a brass T fitting that you'll use in line between the one fitting and I believe it's the sensor. All you need to do is trim the plastic, put the fitting in there with some hose, clip it back in and you're essentially done at that point. What I've found is this will pull an adequate amount of vacuum on the PCV system and on the crankcase to avoid any smoking. Now on my E90 N54, the valve stem seals on cylinder three, four, and six were getting pretty bad. Without this setup and with just the RB billet PCV system or the PCV valve, it started to smoke quite a bit on D-cell. With this, it was very minimal unless I actually drove the vehicle pretty hard. So this is gonna be essentially what you're gonna to wanna to do on your vehicle and what I highly recommend. So just a quick recap. High side, you're gonna want a VTT or similar flapper delete fitting. You're gonna to go to a China valve. Now they say China valve, it's, it's essentially just a billet one-way valve. People just get them out of China on AliExpress or whatever. It's all the same. So you'll have this, you'll adapt it to the China valve and from the back end of the China valve to the rear inlet. Now, whether you decide to put a catch can in line or not, it's completely up to you. Again, mine never caught any oil. Maybe yours does, I guess. In some cases it may, but that's up to you. For the low side, you're gonna need an ADE PCV delete fitting. From there, a Mark IV 2JZ Toyota Supra PCV valve. From the PCV valve, you're gonna use hosing to the inlet portion of your Mishimoto or similar catch can. And again, this one has better filtration, so I found that this works the best. From the out here, you're essentially gonna tap it into your EVAP line near the throttle body. Now, it does have a one-way check valve, so you're not gonna be pressurizing your catch can. I'll include some links down in the description of what I've used. Now, again, I've spent hours upon hours of research and time and 
invested a lot of effort into perfecting the PCV system. It worked fantastic on my E90 and I couldn't imagine a better setup. And realistically, you get the fittings, you're gonna be into it for maybe 150 bucks for both sides, the high side and the low side. So it's really not that bad and it's a good DIY. So that's all for today. Again, go through all the links. It's gonna be a lot of reading, but it's gonna provide a lot of information that I find very beneficial. And I think it may interest you quite a bit to just skim through and read a bit more. That's all for today. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.